I have with me Mr. Subodh Bhargav and Lieutenant General Sharma. And towards this closing time of the Horasis meet, there is one subject that we all need to talk about, and that is the energy basket of India. And I thought, who else except these two gentlemen to share perspectives, output, and some things. So, uh, Mr. Bhargav, you've been involved with this industry for a very long time in the capacity of being a board member of so many large enterprises. Where India stands today from an energy perspective, I know the government has used words like energy security, and what do you think is, is a more optimal way for energy uh, usage and generation in India? Well, you see, energy source in India traditionally has been thermal, uh, which has got its own uh, sort of benefits in terms of cost, and especially as the technology has been moving. But the real problem in India on thermal or other energy source is the reforms in the power sector, whether it is on transmission or distribution. Mm -hmm. But generation is the basic, and uh, only increasing generation would not end the problems or give us all the solutions. So therefore, uh, these reforms have to be taken rather urgently and seriously. Uh, there have been some beginnings, initiatives like in Delhi, distribution has been is a timeline beyond which it will not be there. And I hope they don't do that. Because I don't think entrepreneurs should be going back to the government with whatever their booze in case of any problems coming up. And the mission of 20,000 megawatt uh, solar generation by 2020, I think it's very practical, very possible. It's, it's on track. And, it's uh, on track. Yeah, uh, it's on track. In fact, two, and two, two gigawatts of off-grid. Yes. So 22 now. That's right. It should be 20, so that's what. And this off-grid is a challenge. Challenge, yes. But, uh, that's I'm sure we need this. Actually, we also need entrepreneurship. In that. Yes. It's not just government policy. Yeah, of course. We sure. need entrepreneur. And you know the fact that rural India or the farmer doesn't wish to pay is a myth. It's not correct. Uh, if you give him power at the right time of the right quality, he's willing to pay. And I, I have models available in rural India and in villages where uh, initially the word was that they won't pay anything more than this. They are paying for five rupees or six rupees a unit. Yeah, Very happily if they get the power at the right time. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I agree with you. In yeah. fact, uh, the, the one subject that we talked about, that it does not take away the land space, and so it's not intrusive in that manner. Even on the agricultural food it, processing and cold chain, all the cold storage warehouse, if you just put the panels on top, yes. it doesn't require more than that to generate enough power for that. Absolutely. And India, what? climatic uh, sort of opportunity we have for power, solar power, is uh, I mean, tremendous. 3,000 hours a year Absolutely. is what is availability and incidence is so good, solar radi radiation. So we, I think it's a win-win for us which should do it. Absolutely. And so my, my opinion also, I think solar is the way to go, and especially for off-grid no. and for rural area. That's one of the but areas, a part of the energy basket, I think. For size of India, I won't write off nuclear. No, I won't. I won't the, write it too. Yeah, the I mean, type uh, of, a, you know, volume of power capacity we need, mm -hmm. I don't think solar alone would enable us, even in 20 years, we need a few major nuclear projects to supplement. Another interesting thing which came up in the discussion on it, which I was a little skeptical about, is somebody turned around and you could say that India should reduce its energy demand. And he said that, you know, the energy demands are too high and we have learned that lesson. And same yeah, story, yeah, yeah. back again, moralistic to us. Uh, while India is growing, rather than asking for the supply side, we should manage the demand side and therefore curb the demands and go for smarter homes, smarter air conditioning, smarter models, everything smarter, so that the energy consumption should go down. Else, he argues, that India will never be able to meet the demand because it's going to go up so dramatically that nothing will cope with it. Your comments? You know, uh, Energy efficiency to be improved, is okay. I agree with that 100%. Aspiration? We have a lot of uh, you know, wastages which we need to cut out. Fair. But to talk about the smart houses and smart air conditioning and incur capital costs somewhere today and consume a lot of environment today in creating that capital asset and tomorrow celebrate that we are not consuming is not a correct thing. There's a lot of argument, there's a lot of debate. Uh, it's not over. Yeah. And therefore, anyone saying that, look, cut down power generation and power production, I don't agree but become more efficient in your power use. I agree. I, I, I completely agree with you on that. Uh, the one thing I'd like to say, coming back to the nuclear, and since we are talking energy basket, uh, my, it's my personal opinion that uh, the original concept, which was a few years ago, that India, which is currently generating 2% of its energy through nuclear, 
would go to a 20% over in the next 20, 30 years. So I think while the activism has come in because of various incidents recently, I completely agree with you that uh, there are a couple of things that have to ha happen parallelly for us to reach that point. Nuclear, going from 2 to 20 yeah. over time. Yeah. Hydel, as you said, uh, uh, decentralized power stations all over and solar with parity coming already proven. Yes, uh, I mean, I remember two years ago, I mean, when I used to talk about this, people say, are you crazy? Sure. I, I parity? Are you crazy? Are you crazy? And you're talking now that we've achieved I, I, that point. I remember that, yes. And, and, and uh, so, I think there's a ground to celebrate. So I pick on the word that you very often use, which is the myth word, that there are a lot of myths in businesses and understanding. Yeah. And I think, uh, so I feel very encouraged with I mean, this conversation. I mean, is there a, is there a tech, you're a technology ex expert now. We, people are talking about smart metering. It says that uh, peak time demands at 12 o'clock is different rated, and solar rated differently. In the grid electricity, when you're having nuclear, different. So smart metering, is that the way forward to control, help, subsidize in an indirect way electricity consumption? You, you, know, you know, General, I gave a presentation at uh, the Save Our Planet in Malaysia. And, you know, Cisco, which is earlier uh, only a router company, uh, has now moved on to space of creating smart cities and smart grids. The thing is, we're talking about a, a future of a smart grid system. Mm. Okay. On the smart grid, you have uh, devices that are smarter than just measuring, where the, the traffic is bilateral, both yeah. sides. You give in and you give back, depending on you're a net cons yeah. consumer yeah. or a producer. So those things... I am sure are something of reality. Mm. Now, I don't know the timeline for India because we have to first become more self-sufficient then get into this level. Uh, but for sure, smart grid mm. on a larger uh, context so, is, is the word. Let, let me say even without a smart grid, it's a question of accepting in the mindset the benefits of uh, decentralized power generation right. and power generation with the special technology, specific technology of peak load. Peak load, exactly. Now, peak load uh, is, you know, something where, and Watsila India, along with McKinsey, have done a very detailed study to show what cost is being incurred today, or what would be the saving if we had this peak load uh, approach accepted. And once again, I think the power ministry and the bureaucrats in the ministry are thinking of peak load provisioning uh, to bring down the overall yeah, uh, the, cap the cost curve, of the yeah. power or make available power in a more uh, consumer-friendly manner. Right. Uh, incidentally, in a one off point also, I was surprised to hear today by one comment by European that India is the only country in the world which has got a ministry of non-renewable and renewable power. He says, that shows the kind of... That shows the, the seriousness, the I mean... Uh, and, uh, well, they were uh, very impressed uh, by the fact... You can know, interpret it either yeah, way. <laughs> On one hand, if you have one b b window, you can do much more a comprehensive integrated planning. Mm -hmm. When you have separate ministries, you add to some right. woes and at problems. At but there is, a focus, there is a focus, which we might take the benefit of. Uh, and as we go forward, I'm sure we will find that integration of a larger power picture basket uh, to be brought in. Well, I think uh, I feel very encouraged with this uh, go forward on the energy basket. There's a lot of opportunity for entrepreneurs in technology. Yeah, and technology. Encouraged, yes, but today's crisis, apart from if anything is infrastructure, is most severely impacting the growth is power. Power, yes. And we need yeah. urgent action, therefore Absolutely. that's important. That's it. It, they say that it drops 1% of your GDP yes. if there is Absolutely. no uh, energy. Totally so 1% of GDP can come straight from there. We are now joined by Gunjan Sinha, who is the chairman of Metric Stream United States. Welcome to this uh, little debate we had on energy basket. And we had a very immersive discussion on various aspects of uh, what the energy is. And there's one aspect that uh, we would like to ask you, since you're in that space, is from a a regulation regulatory perspective uh, the energy uh, you know we're talking going nuclear we're talking parallelly going solar hydro all of that and we have reached parity with the grid with other sources so uh, where that's do you come a, in on that that's a very very relevant conversation and uh, one of the things which we are now finding and, and just as a, as a quick introduction about metric stream a uh, metric stream is a global leader in governance risk and compliance and many of our customers are the large multinational companies, especially in the power and energy sector around the world. And these companies are actually looking at the increased regulatory risks which they have to deal with. 
Just to give you a simple example, a company like uh, Pacific uh, Gas and Electric, PG&E, which is one of the largest on the west coast of the United States, they have over 2,000 people working in just auditing what they do because there is so much regulatory oversight. Because the demand is captive, consumers are, they don't have a choice. They have, they have to consume electricity from, uh, from only one company. That's PG&E. Which is PG&E. But on the other side, there is a slew of regulations from Washington, D.C., but also at the state level, which they have to deal with. And they, those things change. For example, when you talk about things like smart grid, it adds a layer of complexity. How should it be priced? What are the specific regulations on which you need to comply so that you are able to actually you know, showcase and prove that you are actually doing what needs to be done? So that's where a lot of the challenges comes in. People think that the power companies or energy companies are not very forward looking because they don't adopt new technologies. But one of the biggest impediments in that area is because they have to have the regulatory oversight, they, they fundamentally are in the risk management business. Once they know how to manage risk, then they can adopt new technologies, sure. they can become more efficient. Absolutely. And that's uh, going. Another great customer of ours uh, on the East Coast is Constellation Energy, which is the largest energy company uh, on the East Coast. Same story there. They have now gotten to a point where at every point of decision in the entire company, they know exactly what the risks are. So for example, if they're trading on certain energies, or if they are, you know, they're making certain decisions on uh, how, uh, you know, the pipeline or the distribution lines uh, need to work, they know exactly what are the implications of that. What regulations they have to deal with when it comes to NERC, which is the nuclear energy regulations, or FERC, which is the federal in, uh, energy regulations. These, this, these are the kinds of complexities which many companies in the U.S. are dealing, but equally so internationally. So I'm sure we're not abandoned. This is exactly what the question I was thinking about asking you, that if a country like America, which is so mature in energy management and handling, yeah. is falling some of the complexities in regulatory procedures, what about a country like India or China or other countries? Do you think this is let's, what you yeah, in General, let's yeah. face it, the U.S. is much more litigant yes. in terms of approach to yeah, everything yeah, than the rest of us. And honestly, I would hate to see a scenario yeah. where we have a regulatory framework the way U.S. has it and implements it. Uh, I know we need to continue to focus on human dimensions and other dimensions, yes. but I think U.S. Go has gone overboard on it. Yes. Yes. So. You know, so, so, so I'll, I'll give you an example. I mean, right after the, the tsunami hit Japan, and I mean, there was a whole slew, if you remember the earthquake and the tsunami. Yeah. Yeah. So they had modeled, you know, what will happen if a tsunami hits. They had modeled what will happen if an earthquake hits, but what they hadn't modeled was what if a tsunami and an earthquake hits at the same time. So now what has happened is they are retrofitting many of the power plants and, you know, like Tennessee Valley Authority, which is one of our, uh, they've produced 20% of the electricity in the United States. It's a city in itself. And because of the nuclear issues, they are the entire physical security and disaster risk management under disaster conditions is now becoming a multivariate problem which they are modeling into the, the, the whole system of yeah, how the power yeah. generation happens. I think I agree. I mean, uh, India, I'm talking of India now in energy, while we go forward in becoming self-sufficient and meeting our demands. We have now, the, the good news is that the, the, the Indian companies and companies which are actually really made in India are beginning to realize the power of kind of regulatory controls, risk management, and they are actually deploying systems in that effect. And we are beginning to see that happen now across multiple verticals. And I think the energy and utility sector is going to follow suit in, a, in, a, in, a, in the same way. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's a big market and it's, we're on a point where, you know, the figures are so astronomical. Yes. The number of uh, things that's going to happen in energy. I'm sure uh, it's, a, it's good to hear from you that there are Indian companies showing interest in and at least sure. engaging to begin yes. with and buy a small suite and go each step at a time as uh, Mr. Bhargav said. So I think people like you should be consulting to Government of India to evolve the regulatory framework yeah. step by step. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then the industry will have to conform. Yes. Yeah. And, and in a very practical manner which is doable for an emerging economy. Yes. Absolutely.
And that is that's key here too. Scale level also. Yeah. And as you go along, like you said, building blocks, you know, you can buy things yeah. later as you go but forward. But that limit, I think, is, uh, that's factors too. Yeah. yeah. So no, I, yeah. I think I'm in full agreement with that, and I do believe that that is the direction in which most emerging economies are actually yes. going in their natural course. True. This is a trend which is along the way. I don't think the regula regulations are are a bad thing or a good thing. These are necessary things. Absolutely. You know, just like you know. I mean, I think uh, you know some regulations are made for to protect citizens, protect laws, protect uh, the interests of the broader society, human beings, and human beings at large. And I think the, the issue is how much is good enough, and then yeah. how do you progress? That is, the, that is the absolute problem. I agree with you totally. And with your experience, I think India will also have a system in place which is suitable to its needs. Yes, great. That's interesting. That's a very good thing. So. Uh, all kudos to the energy, uh, as I said, Mr. Bhargav, that uh, a lot of entrepreneurs today yes. uh, who have moved from a concept stage now to the hardcore manufacturing and design and go to market. Uh, I was very encouraged. We have a division that does uh, solar uh, systems. Uh, for We are focusing on the rural market off the grid. Okay. And so we are looking at, uh, you know, from uh, as small as 17 watts to up to, uh, the, where the DC systems are, you know, 74 watts and then it goes to 3,000 watts, lighting up homes yeah. and later on you have the option of connecting to the grid oh, anyway. Absolutely. But so, you know, these are, uh, it was good that you said that uh, this is, uh, and now that we have arrived at the parity, yes, uh, I take over. back good I, feelings. I think it will be accelerated growth. Yeah, yeah, so. I, I, was, uh, we, I was working for off-grid solutions, that's something which I'm yeah. thinking of working along with Edith. And now that you encourage us to say the off-grid is the answer, I think I'm quite enthused that we can build up the off-grid solution. So we, I'm absolutely about. sure. So and we even got, if we make a small building, yes. I mean today, if you look at Gurgaon, just on the outskirts of Delhi, every house top will have a solar yeah. unit planted every, every, there. Sooner or All later. new construction has we'll got have, solar. Yeah. We'll so I think this is the movement in the right direction. Yes. You start small, you take care of part of your energy requirement through solar. Okay. As we get experience, we expand it. We perhaps don't have any terraces. We'll have only solar panels. So, yeah. you know, in fact, <laughs> this, this, uh, if you go back and look at the history, right? I mean, you know, if you remember a few decades back, I mean, you know, to getting landline telephone was a big deal in India, and then the mobile came and kind of just short circuited leapfrog. the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the leapfrog. I think the off-grid power is going to do the same, same thing. thing. Uh, because yes, accessibility absolutely. to energy and power at the point of consumption is where the world is headed. And yes, I think right. we do not have to invest in an infrastructure which is antiquated or grid-based and so forth. Yeah. And I think that's something which, yeah. you know, we can see it coming. Like satellite TV is going to be yeah. installed, you know, no yes. cables, nothing. We're gentlemen friends. Yes, at least I got energized with this conversation. Thank you. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very